Should Gary Gensler be fired? I mean... But Eleanor, how are you doing? I saw you had Tony slash Thinking Crypto on the top. Friend of the channel. He was just on ATB. You've been on ATB. We got to get you back. Eleanor, though, it's been an insane 18, 24 hours. Just first, just that give us has. your thoughts. So what's going through your mind right now? Going through my mind right now is I could use the nap that yesterday I said I so desperately needed at the same exact time the SEC put out what we now know as a fake tweet that the spot ETFs had been approved. So I'm still running on about three hours sleep, but it's all good. It's all fun. And, you know, it's never a dull day. That is literally probably the mantra of my life. There's never a dull day, but it really has been an interesting 24 hours. I mean, I don't think we would ever have guessed that the SEC Twitter account would have been hacked to the point on maybe the most important day of, you know, the agency's you know, not maybe in the last year, the most important day of the agency, but definitely the most important day in the crypto space in in a few years. So could we have predicted it? No. Am I surprised? No. <laughs> Eleanor, it's actually nice to see your face. I've been on a few Twitter spaces with you, actually, with Because Bitcoin discussing a lot in the markets. But I want to start off the conversation here as well today with this morning. You put out a tweet regarding uh, multiple senators reaching out to the SEC looking to get answers from the investigation that the SEC now needs to take on themselves. I kind of want to get your thoughts. on. I know you're running off no sleep, but this is one of the things that you probably woke up first to this morning. Uh, what are your thoughts on Senator Vance and Senator Tom actually coming out and demanding an explanation for the SEC's errant announcement? They had a few questions in there that were very interesting, like whether or not there was going to be an approval. Uh, could this be a setback? What does this mean for cybersecurity? Uh, what have you heard from potentially sources, but as well as just your thoughts on the senators reaching out for the SEC investigation? Yeah, I think those letters were expected. I think obviously this is Congress's job to oversee the regulatory agencies. The Senate Banking Committee is an overseer of the SEC as the House Financial Services Committee. So I would expect hearings on this, most likely. I have been trying to reach out to sources on the Hill to see if there are any rumblings. I know it's, it hasn't even been 24 hours since we we got that tweet from the SEC yesterday, but things move fast. Uh, well, actually, that's a lie. <laughs> things, things do not move fast in government, especially, especially in Congress. However, this does seem to be a pressing problem. We obviously got the letters this morning, so we'll see if those result in any hearings. What I am hearing is that likely, I think everybody does want to see the set of banking or the uh, House Financial Services haul Gary up on the Hill. What I'm hearing is that it's probably going to start more at staff level because this was, was you know, a staff issue, you know, not necessarily like going to the, to the top right away. I don't think Gary would have any answers on this. So they're going to have to start low and then maybe move higher. I definitely agree. Everyone wants to see Gary Gensler, you know, hauled up in front of Congress. We, everyone would love to see that. There's another thing everyone would love to see, and that's some sort of bullish scenario out of all this mayhem. And the bullish scenario I want to ask you about is just, it's more about the fees. We've seen a race to the bottom with these ETF fees. And Eric Bautunas, he just posted, essentially, fees will never raise. Fees almost always just lower. They'll only go in one direction. So we've seen a race to the bottom with these fees. Very, very attractive for people looking to deploy capital. How do these fees compare to, say, a gold and oil SP, you know, one of these, some of these other ETFs? Well, I will say I'm not as familiar on the other ETFs. I'm not an ETF analyst, although I feel like I'm becoming one slowly <laughs> as the days pass. Um, I will say in regards to the fees, though, that I, I do think that it's raising some eyebrows. I mean, I, I, I've seen, I think Caitlin Long was the first one to tweet a few days ago, you know, all these low fees. You know, how are they actually going to make any money here? And I think it's a good way of getting people into the product, right? People see low fees. It's almost like a yard sale or an auction. It's like, okay, those are low fees. I'm not going to have to pay up front for the first six to 12 months, that's attractive. Let me get in here. But like I said, I've, I've made this point this morning. These aren't, it's not like we're going ourselves as retail investors or, or retail investors going through an exchange doing this themselves. They're going through their, you know, advisors to figure out which one is the best out of these 11 or, or maybe more. What is the best one that's going to get me good exposure? That's safe. That's going to be around for, for a while. Um, so, you know, I think it's interesting to note that the two crypto specific companies, you've got Grayscale and you've got Bitwise, 
Grayscale specifically, they're they're not joining the fee war. Essentially, they're kind of they. I think they cut their fees from two percent to one point five percent, and I think that's because they're banking that their product is quality. They have a lot of the market share already, and that if people were to leave the fund now, they would have to pay an inordinate amount of of capital gains tax in order to get out and then join another one of those funds. So, you know, I think the fee war, like, while I think it's just more of a marketing campaign as mm-hmm. opposed to, you know, is, are we really going to see a lot of inflows, a lot of AUM because of this fee war that's going on? And I'm also very interested to know if you've heard anything from these advisors in terms of an altcoin, so such as an Ethereum ETF coming closely after. I know you've spoken to Eric Bautunas and Tom, uh, Tom Seifert multiple times. Uh, regarding the potential or possibility of ETFs not being too far along. Uh, but have you heard these from sources yourself that they're looking to establish Ethereum ETFs pretty close to the announcement of approval of a Bitcoin ETF? There are some ETFs, Ethereum spot ETF applications that have been filed already from some of the issuers that are going to list the Bitcoin spot. So that will obviously be the thing to watch next. I've heard predictions you know, anywhere from the next couple months to the end of the year that we could see an approval for an Ethereum spot ETF. I don't really know the timelines. I know Eric and James have been great at laying out the different deadlines, and I think we'll start to see that as well. And who knows? I mean, I think now that the process is in place, the SEC, this is the SEC's first foray into trying to figure out how to get up a, a crypto ETF off the ground, right? The issuers now understand the process, the SEC does. So because we've got this sort of pioneer, which was the Bitcoin spot ETF, it's probably less time for an Ethereum spot ETF to get approved. However, we still don't really know how Gary Gensler feels about Ethereum, right? He's been kind of, that's that's the one question that Congress asks him all the time that he refuses to answer in the hot seat is, is Ethereum a security or not? So whether you know, he's going to make it difficult because of how he feels about the certain asset, we'll have to see. But I did make the point yesterday that I've spoken to a few people who believe that an XRP uh, spot ETF, probably while the XRP community would love to see it, while XRP is technically the only token that has clarity from the courts, the way the SEC is now and the way that Gary feels about altcoins, and he took Ripple to to task XRP status. So I don't, we'll see anything like that anytime soon, but but now that the process is is there and, and there's been a pioneered path, you know, I, I think there'll definitely be there's some movement this year. All right. So uh, Ethereum, you know, for the ETF, a path has been laid by Bitcoin, but maybe this path has extra speed bumps, you know, whether or not it's a security or not. I have a question for you. This is a bold question. Should Gary Gensler be fired? I mean, I I don't know if you would have a case, if, you know, against Gary Gensler to get fired specifically for what Good happened point. yesterday. Right. I mean, I think a lot of people in crypto don't like Gary. I think a lot of people would like to see him fired. However, I I really don't think logistically from a legal perspective that anyone would have a case to say, you know, that was all Gary's fault. We really don't know what happened in terms of we know that there was obviously a a third party involved, an unknown individual who had access to the SEC account or the phone number associated with that account. So whether it was someone internally or someone externally, we don't know. The language is, is still pretty murky. And I'm wondering if we're actually ever going to figure out who or why or what happened. But I, I don't think from a legal standpoint, you can't blame Gary Gensler directly. And I don't think it's a fireable offense. However, will the office of the inspector general take a look at it? Maybe they're already investigating the SEC for, um, I believe it's like, rule practices, right? The the uh, invest, uh, the inspector general report that came out in 2022 criticized the SEC for the hasty rulemaking process, the, the practices around that, um, the way they communicate with staff. So I wouldn't be surprised if cybersecurity concerns are also added to the list of things that the inspector general takes a look at. Yeah, I, I think the crypto communities, uh, you know, most favored dream would be Gary Gensler just passing and approving the the uh, the spot ETFs and then leaving like Jay Clayton did when he announced the lawsuit for the uh, the XRP lawsuit back in I think 2020. Uh, but that kind of leads perfectly into the discussion around okay, well, what else is happening behind the scenes right now? You know, why are the SEC looking at crypto in this way? Why is Ethereum not a security, or why is it a security, and why is Bitcoin not a security? 
Uh, and so, you know, there's a discussion around national security. You have better markets, which is obviously backed by people like Elizabeth Warren. Uh, and of course, you had the DOJ as well as the SEC come out just last month with Janet Yellen, uh, where she kept saying Binance, and it ended up turning into this massive meme through Twitter. But the discussion around that 45 minute or so pep talk uh, where they were just telling the world what they're going to do to crypto was, hey, we're worried about a national security threat here. This could be funding terrorist organization. It is funding crime organizations. And then now yesterday, you guys just had on Fox News, I believe, or maybe it was this morning, uh, Jamie Dimon coming back out saying, hey, yeah, this Bitcoin is good for nothing. It's valueless. It's worthless. Uh, and it should be just used for it's just used for illicit activities. Where do you fall into the, you know, the national security part of this? Is, is that actually is this actually a bigger discussion that needs to take place in the crypto community? Or are we just at a point where markets are just extremely bullish, a little bit too euphoric, uh, and ultimately just anticipating the spot Bitcoin ETF? Well, I think there's always concerns about national security, obviously, whether they're warranted in this situation. I don't know. Uh, the report that came out from the Wall Street Journal, which cited a specific amount of money that Hamas was was funneling into crypto or getting from crypto, turned out to be inaccurate. At least that that initial report was that sparked Elizabeth Warren to go and recruit 20% of the Senate to get on board to this anti-money laundering bill. So there's there's definitely a message here that that people who don't want to see crypto succeed are like Elizabeth Warren, like the Better Markets team, they're they're pushing that narrative, right? But you know, I think there should always be concern. It, it it's funny you say that and I wanted to bring it up yesterday the right before this whole thing with the SEC went down. A source close to some of the issuers told me that there was concern that there was going to be a North Korea hack. You know, the Lazarus Group, that's the state yeah. sponsor. To, yeah. So they were concerned because apparently they've been moving. This has been reported that they were moving coin around wallets that haven't been touched in a while. Why would they be moving it around on the eve of potential approval of these Bitcoin spot ETFs? So there was some concern that the issuers were going to be targeted by North Korea. And so, you know, here's me thinking like, oh, goodness, like, you know, that's the last thing we need, like a North Korea hack to just derail this whole thing. And then there was a hack, sure enough, about 30 minutes later, but it turned out to be a hack of the SEC's Twitter account. So, I mean, I think there's always a concern about about national security. It's always going to be part of the conversation, whether it relates to whether it should be put on the shoulders of crypto solely. I don't think so. I mean, you know, you see money laundering, money laundering, uh, terrorist financing happening through banks, through cash. So to to blame an industry for the ills of pretty much the world is is I don't think it's going to be a tactic that that people take seriously. You know, I almost didn't ask this question because it was too bombastic. And you, so you have these different sources, you're seeing different bits of uh, information. I want to ask you, and again, now I guess it isn't bombastic. Where are you leaning as far as the the source of this tweet? Are you leaning more towards Gary Gensler's assistant who is scorned? Or are you leaning more towards, I literally was going to say North Korea Lazarus group. I thought that was too extreme, so I didn't want to ask that question. Turns out I was maybe more prescient than I would have thought. Where are you leaning since you have heard from different sources so far? Well, it's really interesting because there's so many different ways to look at it, right? I don't think that North Korea was the one that hacked the SEC account. However, someone obviously had access to it. Someone put in the time and effort to make a graphic that looks a heck of a lot similar to other graphics that the SEC has put out. And we don't really know how long they had access to the account, right? How long were they planning this? Because obviously they put the time and effort in to make the graphic unless it was already saved in the drafts, which means, you know, that was a premature announcement of, of what was already going to happen. So I'm leaning more towards internal. I, I really don't know, though. And I think I'm not sure we'll ever know, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I think we should definitely, you know, ask and leave it off that because you just actually answer a question we had on the drafts. So Do you think that it was, you know, an inside job or not? But then it really begs the question, OK, if this was a hacker group like Lazarus, uh, you know, the DOJ, the SEC, all these people actually work very closely together. Would they actually approve something that essentially could pump uh, a terrorist organizations hack. I think it's ultimately just way too convenient. This happened the day before. And like you mentioned beginning in the beginning of this interview was, uh, you know, am I surprised that happened? No. Am I surprised that if it wouldn't have happened? You know, of course, it was just kind of both there. It's a double-edged sword there. But Eleanor, absolute pleasure having you on today. Uh, thank you for answering all our questions here. I know DZ might have one or two things last to say here. No, no. Eleanor, is uh, always great. We'd love to have you back on ATB. Uh, you always give, give the great alpha. We're not going to ask your sources, but Eleanor Terrett has some of the best sources 
and all the finance and crypto. And, and I actually heard sleep was a really good thing. So I really hope <laughs> you actually get some good sleep here today. Uh, after the announcement. That's for tomorrow. That's for us tomorrow when we're sipping our, you know, we're enjoying the drinks and celebrating uh, either way. So pleasure for having you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.